I made a decision that, you know, I was going to enter the NBA draft. A player with the skill set and athleticism like Ben McLemore meant it was only a matter of time until he'd declare for the NBA draft. And the day after Louisville won the national title, the Kansas guard did just that and made it official by announcing that he is going to forego his sophomore, junior, and senior seasons at Kansas to enter the 2013 NBA draft in July. I'm Matt Gasper, and thanks for joining us today on a special edition of the Jayhawk Sports Report, where we'll talk not just about McLemore going pro and the Jayhawks' future, but we'll also switch sports and get you ready for the annual KU football spring game this Saturday. But first, this announcement really shouldn't come as a huge shock to Jayhawk fans. Almost a guaranteed top five lottery pick, it was the right time for McLemore to part ways with Kansas. You know, I think that was the best uh, opportunity for me, you know, to have me and my family out. And, you know, as a kid, you know, growing up, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, now I got the opportunity to do that and provide for my family. Throughout his career at KU, uh, although his career at KU was just one season, McLemore set many records as a redshirt freshman. And that speaks for itself coming from a basketball-rich program like Kansas. His 15.9 points per game is a new freshman record, surpassing Danny Manning's previous mark of 14.6 back in 1985. McLemore was 87% from the free throw line, which is also first on the KU freshman list. He was named to the All Big 12 first team as well as the All Big 12 rookie team. He was a John R. Wooden All-American and was named to the Associated Press's All-America second team. McLemore shot 42% from three-point range and connected on 73 triples this season. Who can forget the one he banked in at home against Iowa State to send the game into overtime? Or the six threes he hit in his 30-point outburst against Kansas State? He's a special player that will certainly be missed. If he had been eligible last year, I thought the most we could have ever gotten out of him was two years. Uh, and, and, and he had such a big year this year, and, and people have said so many positive things about him, and, and, and the NBA people appear to, to like him quite a bit, uh, uh, that, that really there was no decision to be made. If anything, we would have encouraged him to explore and probably to go. Uh, not that we would want him out of here, obviously, but, but, but he, he having an opportunity to provide for uh, himself and the people that have done such an unbelievable job uh, raising him and, and, and uh, especially his mother, I think that anybody with a clear conscience at all would have to say, hey, go for it when the time's right, and the time is definitely right. Next season, Kansas will have an entirely new roster. All five starters will be gone, and the only returning players with considerable playing time from last year will be guard Nadir Tharp and forwards Perry Ellis and Jamari Trailer. The Hawks' recruiting class is loaded, however. McDonald's All-American Wayne Selden will highlight the class, with seven-foot center Joel Embiid and guards Connor Frankamp, Brennan Green, and Frank Mason not far behind. Already ranked third nationally with the possibility of the nation's top recruit, Andrew Wiggins, still coming to KU, that ranking may still go up. Wiggins is expected to decide within the next few weeks and is also considering Kentucky and Florida State to go along with KU. So if you're just like me and can't wait for tip-off next season, well, late night in the fog is just 182 days away. All right, after the break, we'll switch gears. While baseball season may just be getting underway, it's never too early to start talking about KU football. And with the Jayhawks' annual spring game this Saturday, that's what we'll do when we come back. Stay with us. Look around you. One in four kids in the U.S. faces hunger. It's not always easy to see the signs, but in this land of plenty, there are kids that don't know where they will get their next meal. Join Share Our Strength in Food Network and take the pledge to end childhood hunger here in America by 2015. Learn how at nokidhungry.org. Their next meal could come from you.
Strike one. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike two. Strike three. Wow. I'm the greatest picture in the world. Yes. Optimism. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Look, it is not as easy as you think being hot, young, and still single. Add that you have this annoying accent. Inviting me to write can be really tough. We decided to pass a link around Facebook, trying to meet people in our area. Well, they just assumed that we were virus or spam. No one wanted to click it. Welcome back to the show. Well, it's time to fire up the grills and break out the footballs again, because the Kansas spring game is on Saturday. Now, if you're planning on seeing head coach Charlie Weiss on the field, I wouldn't hold your breath. Coach said he'll be spending the entire game upstairs in the press box to watch from above and to let his players and assistants run the show and call the plays. So last season, we all remember the Dane Christ experiment. After the first six games, he was, replaced by start, uh, he was replaced at starting quarterback by freshman Michael Cummings. Though Cummings couldn't lead the team to a win in the remaining six games, he did help provide a different kind of spark that opened up the running game for James Sims and Taylor Cox. Well, Mike, you know, the strengths that Mike had last year, he still has, obviously. Um, he makes far fewer mental mistakes, which I think is a, which is a very good thing. I think that, you know, he has a much better understanding of, of terminology. His presence in the huddle has gotten better, where before he was reading plays, now he's calling plays. The game on Saturday will give us a chance to look at the expected starting quarterback as well, Jake Heaps, the five-star transfer from BYU. Last year's spring game was the only time we got to watch Heaps under center since he had to sit out due to the transfer rule. While we had high expectations last season with Dane Chris, getting an extra year to sit out and learn the offense and coaches' expectations may be just what Heaps actually needed. I think that offensively, you know, obviously one of the biggest things playing into the strengths of our two quarterbacks. You know, if Mike were to be the quarterback, it would be a run and play action featured team. Okay, if Jake were the quarterback, obviously it opens up a whole um, set, of, a set of passes that he would be more efficient in in the drop back passing game. So we're gonna try to expose both teams to that. Back to halfback James Sims and Taylor Cox. It was obvious the Jayhawks' strong suit on the offensive side of the ball was in the running game last season. Sims rushed for more than 1,000 yards despite being suspended for the first three games. Cox picked up the slack in those three and then provided the Hawks with a consistent dual threat ground attack throughout the rest of the season. And Tony Pearson? Well, he was used as both a halfback and a slot receiver, and he picked up nearly 800 yards on the ground through a combination of halfback tosses and jet sweeps. First of all, I think our running backs, which were our best position last year, are better by far this year. That's a good place to start. I think there were, we got talent and depth, and they're better, and they were already good. And I think that if you can run the football with, with efficiency, the passing game shouldn't be as tough as we made it look last year. We made it look difficult somehow, you know, but uh, I think that... You know, I think that that, that opens a lot of doors for, that opens a lot of doors for us offensively. We all know it hasn't been pretty for Kansas football over the past few seasons. The Jayhawks haven't won a conference game since 2010, which was a 35-point fourth quarter comeback at home against Colorado. And the Hawks have an overall record of just 6 and 30 in the past three seasons. It's safe to say this year's team, especially the seniors, will be playing with a little bit of anger and intensity come September. I've talked about with them playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulders. You'll hear often, you'll hear them talk about chip on their shoulders, chip on their shoulders, but I had explained to them really what that meant. 
I mean, and I think that if they keep on in the, in the path that we're headed right now, because I think we're a long way from getting that ornery, nasty, you know, nasty mentality across the board. But if they keep on improving the way they've been improving, I think that we'll be, we'll be much better off going into this season. In 2012, Kansas had zero, yes, zero touchdown receptions by a wide receiver. This season, the Hawks have a highly talked about wideout, Justin McKay, who Coach Weiss says reminds him of a young Keyshawn Johnson. You know, the number one overall pick in the 1996 NFL Draft, the wide receiver with more than 10,000 receiving yards and 64 touchdowns during his 10-year career in the league. McKay even wears Keyshawn's number, 19. Now, that's a lot of hype for a player who has yet to see the field at KU. McKay reminds me of Keyshawn when I first got to the Jets. Routes are always a little short. Okay, not the fastest guy in the world. Okay, big, strong, tough. Will catch every catch everything you throw to him. Will block anyone with phys with physicality. Okay, a lot of times his routes are a little short because he doesn't have confidence that he can get there. Okay, but he reminds me a lot of Keyshawn. We've already talked a little bit about junior Tony Pearson. Last season, we saw him used both in the backfield and out in the flat. After studying West Virginia, Coach Weiss saw many similarities between Pearson and Mountaineer wide receiver Tavon Austin. West Virginia used him in a way that Weiss is going to try to use Pearson this season. Austin's measurements were 5'8", 173, and Pearson is 5'10", 170. Both are the quickest and most elusive players on their respective rosters. You know, now Tony is clearly still the most dynamic running back we have. Okay, the only problem is he might be the most dynamic receiver we have as well. I mean, Tony's not a guy that we can detach and he's just a running back. He is a definite pain in the butt for the defense because they really don't know whether to call him a running back or a wide receiver because he's, he's shown in a short period of time that he, can, that he can play detached from the backfield and run legitimate routes and catch the ball, and most importantly, he can get open. The Jayhawks' defense ranked 112th in the FBS rankings for points surrendered last season at just over 36 per game. When the offense only averaged 18.5 per outing, the 1-11 record is understandable. After a slow start this spring, the Jayhawks' leading tackler with 112 last season, junior linebacker Ben Heaney, seems to be coming along just fine. Ben Heaney early in camp I actually was a little disappointed with. I think he, uh, he felt good about uh, that he had a zillion tackles last year. I reminded him that he had a zillion tackles on a team that went 1-11, trying to bring him uh, in its proper perspective. But I think as of late, he's been on a, on a very, very big rise, playing clearly above everybody else at the position right now. Kickoff for Saturday's spring game is at 1 p.m. at Memorial Stadium. Both parking and the game itself are free to students and fans. We'll be back next week to recap the game and get you prepared for the 86th running of the Kansas Relays, which begin next Wednesday. For all of us here, I'm Matt Gasper and Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Be sure to join us a little